Well, the Crows led by 25 points at quarter time and 27 at half time. Hawthorne got to within a point in the third quarter and got level in the final quarter before going down by 14 points. Adelaide 14 18 102 to Hawthorne 13 10 88. Tony Modra, consistent all season. He's had just one game where he failed to score. That was against Carlton. Another five today. Bickley got three and Robin kicked two. And for Hawthorne, Brendan Crummel was remarkable. He kicked five goals all in the second half and four of them in the last quarter. And Daniel Chick kicked two goals. Well, we're sort of breathless after that game and uh, it was a fantastic game. It was a fantastic contest. As we said earlier, the Crows jumped out of the blocks and it looked like it was just going to be a goal-scoring shootout. Well, the Crows, I think, would have won comfortably and Hawthorne did what they had to do to have a chance in the game. They tightened it up, they made it a struggle and they put the pressure on the Crows, but the Crows were good enough, still had nine more scoring shots, so they didn't kick very well, otherwise they may have won by a little more, but the Hawthorne cat at them, as you said, got close. Uh, well, got level in the last quarter, but the Crows were good enough to kick the last two goals to win it. Oh, gee, Richard Taylor's uh, had a pretty good season, played well today. Pretty useful. This is in the third quarter there when uh, Hawthorne had to come back from behind, and they did. They got almost up for Taylor, then Chick. Uh, I think Bickley kicked a goal in the third quarter that helped a lot too. And uh, Lawrence, well, he'd come down from centre-half back. He came on and played centre-half back. Crummel went into the forward line, and both those moves were very good for Hawthorne. They both uh, ended up being very influential in Hawthorne getting back into the game. Uh, Robin, yeah, not a great game. Started OK. As I said, I thought Lawrence did well on him after that, but certainly that goal was important. And Bickley again, those key possessions in tight um, was a very valuable captain's role. They must react pretty well to Ken Judge, the Hawks, because they kicked the first four goals of the third quarter and the first four of the last. Yeah, well, it was to total effort. You wonder where their goals were going to come from, but uh, certainly Crumble with five goals in the second half. Uh, he was an unexpected uh, multiple goal kicker. Chick, I thought, was very good. Left at the ball hard in the forward line, marked the ball pretty solid. But again, if you have someone looping at the ball as that happened then, the ball is at least going to come to ground. And Crummel again, four goals in one quarter. He would have been a hero if Hawthorne had to go home. Yeah, he would love to have won the game just to cap it off. Yeah. But it wasn't to be. And Nigel Smart again, Malcolm Blight kept his nerve with the uh, matchup. See, this was really important, wasn't it? Game was tight. And the one-on-one -on -one contest that Robin won and then kicked the ball goal from the 50-metre mark there, uh, very important. And Crummel, this is his fourth goal of the last quarter from the 50-metre line and put it through. I think the scores became level at that point. But after that, the Crows regained control of the game. And here we see here, of his free kick to Modra, he was going to get to the ball if Graham hadn't grabbed hold of the jumper. And that put the Crows, I think, eight points ahead and almost safe. Yes, and they ran out winners by 14 points. Well, the stats look interesting, don't they? Particularly those handballs. Hawthorne's game, a lot of handballs to try and maintain possession. The Crows a lot more direct. I think we've noticed it in their game this year with Stanfield and Modra deep on the forward line. They kick the ball in there long. 199 to 94, you know, that kind of percentage, about half the number of handballs to kicks is about the percentages that you're usually looking for. Neil Curley's in the Crows' rooms and here he is with Matty Robert. The start you were looking for, but then you couldn't really go on with the nail the game early. No, Neil, we certainly had a, a terrific start. I think it was 6 1 up at quarter time, and, and certainly looking forward to going on to, to possibly kicking quite a reasonable sort of score. But I guess to Hawthorne's credit, gee, they fought and, and really fought very hard in the last three quarters, and it perhaps wasn't really a pretty game of footy in the end. It was just a real tough, real tough scrap, and uh, unfortunately, we came out on top. At half time, did Malcolm sort of have any. Uh idea of what Hawthorne might do? Did he make you aware of what Hawthorne might do? Not really. Um, I mean, I guess going into the game, losing Dunster, we were from the start perhaps a little unsure as to, as to what they were going to do and where players were going to play, but um, I guess we came in at half-time, I think we were 20-odd points up or something like that, so we just sort of refocused on, on our game plan and, and what we were going to try and do, and they gave us a fright in the beginning of that third quarter, and to the boys' credit, uh, the second half of the third quarter, they really fought back and sort of opened up a, a, a pretty reasonable lead at three-quarter time. Matthew, was there Drew, any, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, Drew, go ahead. Yeah, Drew Morford upstairs. I'm just wondering whether you spoke to your brother during the week leading up to the game. Sorry, did you think you might play on him? <laughs> uh, Drew, he can't hear. I'll relay it. Uh, Drew asked, did you, did you speak to your, to your brother at all during the game? 
No, no, we didn't. We um, I'm probably I stood him last year and we didn't say anything on the field. Um, I guess we're both out there to do a job. Certainly a, a bit of a chat after the game, but um, no, it's nice to see he's doing well. It, it wouldn't be easy, I imagine, standing your brother or being opposed to your brother out there, would it? No, it's not easy. I mean, um, I, I guess we're both wanting to play well to keep our spots in the side, and um, you know, if we come up, come up on each other, only one of us is possibly going to play well. So, I'm quite happy I didn't have to line up on him today. Was there any stage during the last quarter you thought you might lose the game? Um, no, I guess one of the things we uh, we concentrated on prior to the game was was never stop believing in ourselves, and uh, and that was certainly rubbed in again at half time. Um, and I guess we were always constantly reminding each other on the ground that um, you know we're always a chance to win the game. So I guess no, I never entered to my own, my mind um, that we were going to get beaten. I thought one of the big things that come out of the win was the fact that there was no outstanding Crows player for four quarters. Wasn't there? No, everyone uh, everyone was a solid contributor today. I mean that's that's correct. I don't think we had anyone that uh, that really blew the game apart. Everyone. I guess who had jobs, did their jobs, and um, and it was just a, a full team effort by the 21, which is a, a good sign, I guess. Sam improved a, a handful for you all day. He, he played a superb game in Holland as well. Yeah, the, the two big blokes for them certainly uh, certainly put their hand up for their side today, and um, and Sam and dropping back to you know around the centre half back position, sort of double teaming myself and, and blocking the path of mods. I think he, he, he took a hell, heck of a lot of catches today, and I thought played well. So did Dutchy Holland up forward for them. Matty Robram, do you feel as though you're starting to come into form and fitness? Um, certainly. Um, I guess it's good to have three three solid games under the belt now. Unfortunately, they've all been soft, been good wins, which is, that makes it a lot more enjoyable. Um, but I'll certainly get probably a bit more touch, more fitness with every game we play, so reasonably happy with the way things are going. And tell me, the problem of playing in Melbourne over the years has been highlighted. Do you feel comfortable with the, the boys? Feel comfortable with the fact now that they can come to Melbourne and play well? I think so. I mean, all we all we really needed was a couple of good wins against quality opposition. Did that against Footscray, nearly knocked off Collingwood. Here again today against the Hawks. I guess the, once again, getting back to that belief thing, the boys believe that we can win in Melbourne. Um, I mean, the new travelling routine works in well. Where we come over, have a bit of a trot around on Friday night prior to a game, just settles everyone down, and um, and we're getting the rewards. I think. Thanks, Matty, for your time. Enjoy yourself. Back to you, Drew. Thanks, girls. And I don't think it's any uh, fluke that uh, the one.